So, Dad, what's in these boxes? Yeah, so I got uh, a new toolbox. So it came with two boxes and uh, some assembly required. Some assembly. It says uh, somewhere online or somewhere that it's going to take four hours to assemble it. Four hours? We only have an hour and a half of video battery left anyway. Uh oh, we may have to stop and take a charge. Do you think people will watch an hour and a half of this on, on YouTube? I hope not. So why did you pick this particular uh, toolbox? Well, because it was cheap and it looked pretty good for the price. The uh, I looked around and this one's six foot wide. Or okay. Six foot this way. All right. And uh, the similar thing at Harbor Freight. Well, the one at Harbor Freight might have had a few more drawers in it. Uh, but the similar one at Harbor Freight was uh, $1,200. Oh, wow. You could have got the 20% discount, so that would have made it roughly $1,000. But this one was $4.29 at Sam's Club. $4.29? $4.29.99. Oh, I was thinking like $4.29. Um, okay. Drawer fronts? All right. And Johnny is just hanging out here. He's got plenty of space around him. Just kind of chilling. He's serving as a desk. Yeah, right now he's just holding the... A workbench. He's holding the toolbox. <laughs> you know, I don't think you properly read the instructions that say that this is not a toy. Oh, man! That was close. That was close. I almost lost what little hair I still have. <laughs> How much do you think they spent in plastic? I have no idea how much plastic and the whole packaging. It would be a good question to see how much the packaging is soft. They have it tied in here, though. How do you think various presidential candidates would feel about this drawer? I think Bernie Sanders would not like it. Why would Bernie not like it? Well, first of all, you're clearly not feeling the burn by packing everything in plastic and styrofoam. You might harm a duck. Okay. Um, I don't know. Trump would probably like it because it's manly. I don't think Trump would like it because it's not near fancy enough, big enough. It would have to be 12 feet long. Oh, yeah. And about 10 feet high to be a suitable size. But I bet he would say he loves the people anyway. The, pe the people who made it love him, I'm sure. Oh, yes. And he loves the people who and made it. And he loves the people who made it. Yeah. Maybe it was made in China. China, 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 China. China, China. China. <laughs> um, that is in reference to a YouTube video where Donald Trump just says China a million times. It's hilarious. Just look up Donald Trump saying China. Yeah, it's worth your time. It, it, it truly is worth your time. It's a good life. Open both boxes. Locate and remove the cardboard box containing the number eight solid hardwood top. And wouldn't you know it? What does number eight solid hardwood top mean? It probably means solid hardwood. Yeah, but like number eight. Is it like number eight China Buffet or what? Probably. Probably not. It's definitely China. I think this whole thing came from China. Okay. So those of you uh, made in America folks, I didn't, I failed on this one. How do you have, oh no. Oh no. If this never works again, it's your own fault, Dad. <laughs> Well, if we had two of these, we could spar a little bit. Well, I think we will have to if you'll go ahead and get out the other one. Without breaking it? Yeah. Hey, look at that. Okay, here we go. Let's have Johnny stuff for this. This isn't here. fair, because I have the cardboard box over here that limits my mobility. Well, just step on it. Oh, true. so bad. Yeah. Um, Why am I such a loser at, at styrofoam? At styrofoam. Hey, hey, you know what we can do with this, Dad? Check it out. Put this on the end of yours. Huh? Put it on the end. Yeah, this might work like you had planned. No, it didn't. It's not a styrofoam catapult. Unfortunately not. <laughs> Hey, you know what I may have found? What? The number eight hardwood top. Number eight hardwood top coming up.
I had to set, it said, the instruction said to set all the other parts aside. Bef until you, wow, that's a really nice looking top. It's a number eight hardwood top. I have no idea what that means, Dad. I keep asking. I assume it was part number eight in huh. some picture somewhere that I didn't, didn't look fully, at. Fully read all the directions. This is the underside of said number eight hardwood top. Wow, that's the pretty. Side made it look nice to what? I'm not going to want to use this. That is way too pretty for us. Ooh. Oh, I got to feel it. Oh, yes. That's this is the number eight solid hardwood top. It says right there. Does it come with chips and a drink? Probably. It's got a little chip out of it right there, come to think of it. Okay. See? It comes with at least one chip. But overall, looking pretty good. I'm impressed. I am very impressed. I can tell you what, the Harbor Freight would not have had a number eight hardwood top. Oh no. I am seriously impressed with that. Yeah, me too. So to start building this thing, we kind of get got to get the number eight hardwood top off of the rest of the box. So I think dad and I are going to lift this real quick and sit it on its nice warm bed on the floor um, and then get to work on the rest of it. All right. Why you had the tractor carry this? Yeah, this is just one small piece. Of it. Back frame number four. So our first step is to install the back frame onto the hardwood top. So we have found that these bags of screws are extremely well numbered and labeled. Yeah, so it says on this step, for instance, to uh, locate the number four back, which is right over there and using the number 40 screw and number 27B washers, there's the number 40, see, and the 27 washers are both in here, um, attach the top. Sometimes, sometimes when you do things like this, it's hard to figure out which part they actually want you to use, but since these are all numbered very, very yeah, nicely, very well. this is good. Now, I suppose that the wrench here is a little bit unique. This is a bendy wrench. A bendy wrench. Well, it doesn't really bend, it's just a... A bent wrench? Bendy wrench. Bent out of shape? Yeah. So this is why the wrench is a bendy wrench. The places that you kind of bolt in the back to the number eight hard on top are kind of hard to get to otherwise. So this is actually some pretty well thought through tool giving here. Yeah, of course it could. Uh, I could just go get a deep well socket. But it was already given to you, so... Yeah, you know. If I don't use it today, when will I ever use it? Hey, I bet you could even use this as a buffet to serve Chinese food. Make it feel right at home, there. Yeah. So, when you go to a Chinese buffet, what's your favorite thing to get, Dad? I like, uh, orange chicken. How about that, you? That's really boring. What do you like? I like... Let's see. I like the variety of stuff. You know, like they always have like that coconut shrimp stuff. Oh that's good. my goodness, that's good stuff. Yeah, I forgot about that place. We have now discovered that this also comes with drawer liners. So that your tools don't slide around. This is incredible. Do you think we should just go give Sam's more money for it? I would say yes, but no. <laughs> yes, but no. I mean, I truly am impressed with the quality of both the packaging and the actual product itself. But, you know, it's kind of not, not a thing to just go give Sam's money because you thought something was worth more than you paid for it. Usually, normal people call that a bargain, Dad. Yeah. And they're usually happy about that. Yeah, me too. Install number two right side panel. Use more size 15 screws. Looky there. With the number one screwdriver. No, number uh, 21. 21 screwdriver. There'll be four in this one probably. These are a little harder because. 
because of the small drawer. Uh, Doesn't give you as much space. Right. Okay, so one thing to point out here, I had uh, tightened those back row of bolts up, as you saw in the earlier part of the video, with that goofy wrench. But uh, it turns out then that the holes didn't line up on the front here. So, so it even says in the book that their holes are slotted and you have to leave things loose till you get it all together, but it never occurred to me that that meant front to back as well as end to end. Because the slots look like they're just end to end, but the truth is there's a lot of give front to back as well. And so I had to loosen those back ones to get to it. So now I'm ready to go back together. And this time, I'm better prepared. No more working with the goofy wrench. I'm going to use my handy 13 millimeter socket. So to do these uh, screws here, you have to pull those slides all the way out. And when the slide comes all the way out, it exposes the hole that the screw needs to go in. A little bit of a trick there. But the good part is that there's a screw for every one of these. Uh, so it's, it's got a lot of a lot of attach points. Okay, got all those screws in. Now it's time to put on the back the bottom panel. So we put the grab the bottom panel here, get it out of the plastic, go set it on there and use some more of those uh, same size screws to put it in. Okay, so I'm seeing a little damage. It's the first damage I've seen. Now this is bent just a little bit. It won't be enough to hurt it. I think I'll twist that around to be on the back side. I think we have flexibility to which side it is. And hopefully it'll still fit, but right there is that band. But it still seems to fit in there fine, and I don't believe it'll be visible from the surface at all, so it should be fine. We'll start putting those screws in now. Every one of these uh, spots where I put a screw in is all threaded on the, on the receiving side. It's, very well done in that respect. Okay, next step is to put the casters on. Looks like a pretty obvious task. I can't see how difficult that's going. I can't see how it's going to be difficult. That's how I should say it. It's a nice screwdriver. The magnetism on it is really strong. That really helps. It's that's a big screw to hold up. Okay, the last step while it's upside down is to put these bumpers on the corners. Kind of a nice, albeit unnecessary touch. Kind of illustrated it in the previous thing, but while putting the casters on, but it's just always it's always important, just one general rule of assembling anything that has multiple bolts in it. You never tighten anything up until you get all of them put in. These holes didn't line up so well. Or, well, they did line up, but you had to, if, if I'd have tightened only one of them, I wouldn't have been able to get the other ones in. So, usually, you just kind of get everything started. And uh, once you get everything started, then you can, then you can fully tighten. Now sometimes you can go further than just starting, like on those casters, I could tell that I could go down almost, almost snug. Now these, I want to make sure I get that screw in far enough that it's not sticking out and it won't be the item that hits when we have, when I run into the wall. But beyond that, I don't really need to tighten it much further, so I'll make sure, make sure that it gets in there. So this is the first thing really that a power drill probably would have, oh I don't know, though. it would have been hard to have stopped a power drill. If it was a, unless it was a real accurate one, easy to control. But uh, let's go in there where I make sure the head of the screw is not sticking out. Okay, I'll get the rest of these on and then we can turn it over. Okay, got it turned over now. Christy came out just in time to help me turn it over. I'm not sure I could have got it stood up by myself. 
I probably would have had to beg for help, Christy. It's just awkward. It's, it's a little bit heavy, but awkward. But boy, the surface of that thing, the top of it is way too nice for me to be beating on stuff. You never know, it may be pretty durable. Looks like it's got a nice coating of something on there, shellac. Yeah, it's, or... it's smooth as can be. Yeah. It's a real piece of wood? Yep, number eight hardwood top. Number eight. What number eight means? It's the part number. Oh, okay. Control might have been making fun of it. Yeah, that's really nice. What are you doing now? Putting on these uh, paper tile holders, as Control calls them. So that's the worst fit and finish I've seen so far on the whole thing. Is just how this changes from chrome to the to the flat. There is just not very. You know, it's not perfect, but I'm surprised they didn't just make the whole handlebar chrome. Yeah. But what is the that part you're screwing into? Is it brushed chrome or something? I don't know. It's not really brushed. It's painted. But, you know, yeah, yeah it does look odd. Yeah, I hit threads. Hmm. Well, that thing doesn't have any. That bolt, huh. this bolt doesn't have any threads on it. Well, it's not a very good bolt then, is it? Huh. I wonder Bad quality control. Well, I, on that one bolt, I mean, this has been incredible quality so far. But hopefully, as long as they sit me an extra, we'll be all right. So, so far, you would rate this? Fit and finish has been very high. And value, I mean, we'll, we'll get to that when we see how everything fits and goes together. But it really, I never saw anything even close to this price. Um, you know, like I was telling before, the Harbor Freight uh, rig is eleven or twelve hundred dollars. Twelve hundred dollars, I think, list, and then your twenty percent off coupon would still be a thousand. See? Right, and then this one was what? Four thirty. Four thirty. Twenty nine ninety nine. From Sam's, and they had them in the store. They had several of them. Okay, here's a closer up um, of the handle. I can see what he says there about the fit and finish. Um, real close to the. That may be part of the tape that was on it too. Right? Yeah, it might come off. But it fits pretty well, and I mean, it's going into the holes exactly like it's supposed to. Everything has. I mean, it's just been very easy to assemble. Essentially, obvious to assemble at every step. The documentation has been flawless. Very pleasant surprise. Usually, you expect this China stuff to be. Not so well done. I and didn't I, really need the rolling work table. I was going to just have it fixed somewhere, but I guess it's fine. I actually think the rolling work table might be good for us if we have a party outside. We can use, if the countertop is clean, haha, ha, we could use this as a serving table. So the first time I bent it, I bent it the wrong way. I bent it inward and put all this stuff on the inside, like a blockhead. And so I had to bend it. 180 degrees around, so these little spots where I did the bend, and I hope I didn't weaken them very much. I, I certainly wouldn't want to bend them another three or four more times. This has been, uh, this is so far the weakest link that I've seen in the whole assembly. That really looks. I assume they did that for packing purposes so they could make the drawer flat. I'm sure they did, and, and that was pretty brilliant. And it, it may be fine, the drawer may be plenty strong by the time you get the back and the, the front on front on and everything, it may be fine. It just sometimes you know how it is when you're assembling stuff. It, so what I'm finding is that the drawers are about the most tedious part of the whole installation. The, uh, now the small drawers, they've got, the, I think I showed you the bigger drawer where they just had on the sides the bend. Well this on the small drawers you bend on three sides, so there is no separate back. It's really not hard to put these things together, but uh, it's just tedious because there's so many of them. So there, there is one little trick. There is a video. I, I haven't watched it, but if someone had trouble putting together the drawers, I'm sure there's a, there's a video describing that. And there's one little trick, and that's to put the, when you go to put the drawer front on, it actually has to slide in here. It's not wide enough, so it slides in. And it just doesn't fit real gracefully. Of, because of this uh, swollen out part here, uh, where the door 
handle indention goes. But once you learn to, to do it this right, you can slide it in there real quick like I just did. These have, they all have three screws on the bottom, the medium size and the larger ones have more screws up the side, but these, the small ones have five screws total on the front side. So here's the small drawer after he's gotten it all put together. You pull the rollers all the way out and then there's little hooks on either side of that piece that have to fit into the square cutouts here. So we sit it down in there on that side and then make sure the hook gets fully down into the, the metal part of the drawer and then there's just four screws that have to be screwed in on the side. Okay, I think we're done. One uh, other positive point here about it is that, that it's that door hinge is a nice big long piano hinge, you know, rather than just a couple of weak hinges. Really very happy with this. Yeah, Christy said she's going to have to come out and polish it up because it's got her fingerprints all over it. The installation steps were fabulous. The little uh, skid skid proof mats or whatever uh, are perfect sized. Just pre cut. Pre cut the right number of them. And in the comments, I'd like to see how much uh, other folks have paid for their six foot long cabinets. I was seeing some snap on ones up in the five to seven thousand range. I'm sure they were better than this, but for what I need, this is actually more than enough. I'll bring my stainless steel cleaner out from the kitchen sometime and get those fingerprints off. There you go. Because that's going to bother me.